Hi guys, welcome back to another true crime episode. I hope you're all doing amazing today. I also hope you guys like my new substitution for my palm tree. Honestly, I'm so excited about these. This looks so much better than that crusty ass palm tree I had. So, today we're going to be talking about what happened to Naya Rivera. I guess this isn't necessarily a true crime episode this time. I just wanted to kind of dig in and see what really happened to her. I wanted to find out the details. And this video is probably going to be shorter because there honestly isn't that many details about this out there right now. Because honestly, just listen to the story and you'll see why it's pretty short. So on the 8th of July 2020, a little boy was found alone on a boat in the middle of Lake Piru in California. Not long after, the police found out that this is the son of Naya Rivera, the famous Glee star. But Naya was nowhere to be found. And before I get into what really happened, let's talk about Naya a little bit. We know where she's from, uh, what show she's from, but let's talk about how she got there first. Naya Rivera was born on January 12, 1987 in Valencia, California. Her first role on TV after being in TV commercials was The Royal Family at age 4. After that, she made some appearances in Family Matters, The French Prince of Bel-Air, and Baywatch. In 2009, when she was 22, she got the role in Glee, and that would obviously bring her the most fame. For those of you who haven't seen Glee, it's one of the biggest shows between 2009 and 2015 and was a musical comedy drama series. The series brought up a lot of social issues like race or sexual orientation, but also the classic teenage drama of teamwork and relationships. The first season already was nominated for 19 Emmy Awards, 6 Satellite Awards, and 4 Golden Globe Awards, along with 57 other awards. So, starting right off the bat, the show was pretty successful. Naya played the role of Santana Lopez and joined the show from the very first episode. Naya's character was in 116 episodes out of 121 from that show. Naya would not only be known for representing a Latino minority. The character Santana Lopez would also fall in love with her best friend, Brittany Pierce, and they would become a couple. So she was also a true inspiration for a lot of people who struggled with their sexuality. At the end of Glee in 2015, on September 25th, Naya had her first child, Josie, together with her husband, Ryan Dorsey. They had been married for a year and a half, but after Josie was born, the relationship was turned for worse. And in November of 2016, Naya filed for divorce, but almost a year later, in October of 2017, they called off that divorce for some reason. However, in the late November, Naya was arrested for domestic battery against Ryan. And weeks after that, they filed for divorce again. In June of the same year, the pair were officially divorced and they were sharing custody of Josie. Naya had the primary custody and Ryan was seeing their child pretty often. So let's get to the day of her disappearance. At around midday of July 8th, Naya and her son Josie, now four years old, were heading to Lake Piru in north of Los Angeles. They packed a couple of large bags with things to bring to the lake. At about 1 p.m., Naya rents out one of those uh, pontoon boats. It's a boat with a flat bottom and floats, two couches facing each other and a smaller corner sofa at the back of the boat. As you can see here, the boat is small and has a small gate with the text Paradise Island written on it. In this CCTV footage, you can see them walking towards the boat. Then Naya and Josie take off heading north. And a little bit about the lake. Lake Piru is a 1200 acre reservoir. The depth of the lake ranges between 3 feet to 50 feet. A while later, this is when Naya posts a photo of them two on Twitter where Josie is kissing his mother on the cheek. And it's captioned, just the two of us. It's believed that the two visited the lake in the middle of the week to get some time alone out there without the rush from other visitors and the chance of being recognized. The northern area of the lake is known to be a bit windy at times and the security footage I showed you prior to this, you can clearly see the waves. Considering that the lake is pretty calm the, most of the time. 
So it was definitely windy that day, but it was about 90 degrees, so the weather was perfect for a swim. And I had been at this lake many times prior to this and knew it very well. But the lake is actually not known to be the safest place to swim at. In an article from LA Times, they have reported seven drownings in six years. And one of the managers there seen about a dozen deaths in the past 23 years. Three hours after Naya was last seen, the boat was supposed to be back at the dock. However, they didn't return, so the workers got worried. They went out to look for the boat. After a while, they find a boat, and they just see Josie on the boat, wrapped in the towel with a little life jacket on. The boat was in the area where it's about 30 feet deep. Next to him is Naya's person wallet, her life jacket, and other belongings. Josie is sleeping and is taken from the boat back to the shore. It was about 4 or 5 p.m. and one of the workers called 911. 911 is on the reporting. Uh, Lake Piru, um, the emergency is we have a missing person. We found a little girl in one of the boats by herself and her mom is nowhere to be found. Okay, Lake Piru. And she is, a, is she white, black, Asian, Hispanic? I have no idea. I'm heading down there right now to go check my husband um, with one of the people that were first there. And I'm going to go find out more information. When the police arrived, they asked Josie what happened. And Josie explains that they were swimming and that his mother has pushed him on the board of the boat and started screaming for help. And by the time he turned around, he saw his mother was already under the surface, sinking to the bottom of the lake. And after hearing this, the police immediately starts looking for Naya in the lake and around the lake. They fear that she has drowned, but since it was a while ago, they still look for signs of her being alive. They start interviewing people around the lake and see if she could gotten out in the shore somewhere. So the reason why so many people drowned at the Lake Piru is not known, but is likely due to the currents forming at the lake from the heavy winds. Others say that it might be that the boat would blow away and no matter how good of a swimmer you are, you wouldn't be able to catch up. Some people suggested that there might be whirlpools to pull people down, but the police say there has never been one recorded before. And other people say there have been a lot, so I don't know which source to believe in. The police keep on looking for Naya, but the day turns into night. And the next morning, the police changed the title of operation from a search and rescue to recovery, as they presume she is dead. They were unable to find any signs of her getting out of the lake, and Josie's description of her sinking down the lake when he turned around was a sign that she probably did not make it. But just because they changed the title of their search does not mean that they stopped looking. The police also posted a message on Twitter asking people to stop helping and not look for Naya because they don't, they don't want to look for another body inside that lake. The police also shared that they have been using a helicopter to find Naya along with divers and underwater drones looking for her. And the bottom of the lake is filled with fallen trees and just underwater stuff and if someone fell under the water it would be very easy for them to get stuck and this was a very dangerous job for the divers and a body stuck to the bottom might never resurface. In addition to that the visibility underwater was very poor and divers and drones could not see anything a couple of feet in front of them. The strong currents also made it hard for divers to search the area properly. The police also used sonar equipment and dogs to try and find where Naya's body could be. Some people suggest that Naya was suicidal and just wanted to spend her last day at the lake, but honestly that doesn't sound like a decent theory for me. In addition to the strong current stuff I was saying earlier, a woman on Twitter also came out and said that she almost drowned not too long ago on that same lake. She says how the boat was blowing away faster and she could not swim to it. She was rescued after someone threw in a rope for her to hold on to. She said she couldn't think straight and that her only goal was to get to that boat and she got exhausted extremely fast because of how strong the current was. So we can imagine that Naya was probably in similar situation. And 
If you ever find yourself in a current, your best bet is to try to remain calm. Try to float and kind of get a sense of where you're moving towards. Then move parallel to that, meaning if you're being pulled away from the shore, you should swim to your right and left, not against the current. Usually those kinds of currents don't stretch too far and you can just kind of wait it out. Once you're out of the current, you can swim around it. It's one of the smaller wadi bodies out there. It's, it's not like you're in a sea or in an ocean. You can probably swim if you use your energy in a smart way. So on July 11th and 12th, Naya's parents, stepfather, brother, close friend, and ex-husband Ryan helped look for Naya. The next morning on the 13th of July, at about 9.30 p.m., the body of a woman was found on the lake near Diablo Cove, where Josie and Naya were swimming. The police believe it's Naya since there have been no other missing persons that day, and they take her in to be identified, and not too long after, it's confirmed that that was indeed Naya. She is then sent for an autopsy to rule out any foul play and is determined that all the evidence is consistent with her dying from accidental drowning. According to the autopsy report, she died within minutes. Naya had her prescription Adderall in her blood as well as alcohol level that was five times lower than the legal amount of drunken driving, meaning she was not intoxicated when she died. The county sheriff said that Naya probably mastered enough energy to save her son, but not enough to save herself. There was a petition on change.org to prohibit swimming in that lake because of all the people that died. Because of this and the media attention from Naya's death, any swimming in the lake is now prohibited since August. Ryan now has full custody of Josie and he's safe and healthy. Something interesting to know is that Naya's sister has now moved in with Ryan and apparently they began dating. This did raise a lot of weird conspiracies and gossip online. I know I even saw a TikTok about it, but that kind of enraged Ryan and he said this is nothing but a support system for him. He went on to say that he has lost around 20 pounds since Naya's death in July he gets little sleep and wakes up sad every day, especially for Josie, who has to also wake up every day with no mother. And this is really what have speculated to have happened. I know when she first went missing, so many people were jumping into these conspiracies. Literally the next day, people were posting so many things about this being a conspiracy. Don't even get me started on TikTok. TikTok has conspiracy about everything and I truly love conspiracies but I don't think there's any conspiracies here except for maybe there is a conspiracy about the Glee curse where I think three people from Glee now have passed away one of them being Naya's ex-boyfriend so I didn't know this at the time of filming this um, I looked up what he did right now, what happened to him. So he actually committed suicide. That was because he was convicted of child pornography. And at first I looked it up. I was like, oh, maybe it's some kind of conviction. But they actually found more than 50,000 images of child pornography on his laptop and like 200 videos. And when I say child pornography, I mean like infants and toddlers. And that is so disgusting. Honestly, it's no wonder to me that he committed suicide because any decent person in his life would probably turned away from him. So yeah, that happened to this guy from Glee. And I also saw this picture on TikTok. People just made this for hype. I don't know. As you can see, this is a, another Wayfair posting, allegedly selling Naya for a million dollars. It lo honestly looks stupid. I just included this just to show you how crazy things can get online. But yeah, like I said, it's, it's a short video. I honestly thought I was getting into something a little bigger when I wanted to cover this case. But it's pretty short because it's pretty straightforward. And that concludes today's video. Again, as always, thank you guys so much for your support. 
and your love. We already, I just passed 100k on TikTok just like two days ago, and I already have like 120k. Like, what? This is amazing. And a lot of you guys are here from TikTok, and I really appreciate your support. I'm gonna let you guys have a great rest of your day. Stay safe. Bye.